We have almost reached the end of our journey within Zanardi Foundry, an Italian company that has been working in the cast iron section since 1931. In the previous episodes, we have been able to observe in detail all the preparation from development to casting of a cast iron object. This last episode of the series focuses on the operation carried out on freshly cast iron castings, such as deburring. Deburring is a mechanical operation which can be carried out both manually and mechanically through which the burrs present on the workpiece are removed. Before carrying out the deburring operations, all the cast iron castings exit the foundry, undergo an initial quality check, which includes a visual inspection and a hardness check. Once checked, the work pieces are divided into lots, collected within specific bins for initial handling and suitability, identified with a code useful to perform all subsequent phases. Painting is another operation that is carried out at the Zanardi Foundry production plant. The painting of a cast iron object may be required both for an aesthetic factor and to protect its surface from possible damage related to the external environment, such as rust. There are several ways to paint. Zanardi Foundry uses the immersion in water-based paint technique. Zanardi Foundry is equipped with an automatic painting line. The operators place the individual objects to be painted on the poles hooked to a mobile chain. These first go through a tunnel where they are washed to remove impurities. Then they go through the painting booth where, by means of two lower raters, the workpieces are completely immersed in the tank. They are then manually finished where necessary. Then they go through two ventilated furnaces for the reticulation of the paint and then unloaded by the operators. Even after deburring and painting, the raw cast is not usually ready to be used by the customer. Workpiece mechanical and finishing processes are carried out with different machinery according to the type of operation required. Very often, this phase is not carried out within the foundry, but subcontracted to external mechanical workshops. Instead, Zanardi Foundry has developed its own mechanical workshop within the company, with five access lathes for complex mechanical processing such as turning, toothing, and drilling. Let us now continue our journey inside Zanardi Foundry production plant. A further and more important process present within Zanardi Foundry is the Ostempering Heat Treatment. The Ostempering Heat Treatment is usually carried out by the companies specialized in heat treatments and not by foundries which subcontract this process. Instead, Zanardi Foundry has been carrying out this process internally since the beginning of the new millennium for both its own castings, but also for the castings of other foundries. Being a foundry with in-house heat treatment makes it unique as a company in this sector. This treatment makes it possible to give the spheroidal graphite iron mechanical properties comparable or superior to those of quenched and tempered steel, maintaining the typical lightness of ductile iron and its natural capacity to adapt to the manufacture of complex molds. The material obtained after the heat treatment is called ostempered ductile iron, also known as ADI. To obtain a casting in ADI, it is necessary to treat the spheroidal graphite iron casting suitably enriched by alloying elements such as copper, nickel, and molybdenum. Let us now see how the ostempering cycle takes place. The operators load the treatment baskets with the cast iron castings, which initially undergo preheating, in a specific furnace placed in front of the ostempering furnace. 
the basket reaches the uniform temperature of about 600 degrees Celsius. It is then picked up by an automatic conveyor and transported first into the vestibule and then into the intermediate washing chamber where all of the oxygen and salt vapors are eliminated. Then the basket with the workpieces moves to the austination chamber where the heating phase takes place, reaching an optimal temperature for the diffusion of carbon in the austenite, typically between 800 degrees Celsius and 900 degrees Celsius. Everything takes place in a controlled endogas atmosphere composed of hydrogen, nitrogen, carbon monoxide, and a compound of carbon dioxide, methane, and water. At the end of this phase, the material passes from a generally perlitic matrix to a completely austenitic one rich in carbon. Once austenization is complete, the basket moves back into the intermediate washing chamber without coming into contact with the external environment, then returns to the vestibule and finally descends into the salt bath for the hardening operation. Hardening takes place in a tank containing a mixture of water, nitrates, and nitrites, and the basket with the workpieces will remain immersed in the Austin tempering until the austempering reaction is completed. In the hardening phase, the temperature can vary. The temperature can vary between 240 degrees Celsius and 400 degrees Celsius based on the desired A grade, and it can last from a few minutes to a few hours. At the end of this cycle, the matrix of the material will have transformed into a matrix with an osphoritic microstructure, that is, containing a mix of stable austenite and acicular ferrite. The cycle is repeated continuously and in rotation. While one basket is in the preheating phase, Another is in the austenation chamber, and another is in the hardening phase, in the salt bath. At the end of the hardening phase, once the basket has risen in the vestibule, it is picked up by the automatic conveyor and taken to the water washing system, where all of the saline residues present on the cast iron workpieces and on the basket will be removed. The salts will be subsequently recovered by sending the washing water into an evaporation system and reintroduced into the salt tank. Once the cast iron workpieces are extracted from the washing system, the operators carry out checks and, if requested by the customer, mark an additional serial number with a marker. Let us now talk about quality control. Control of the castings is a fundamental phase to ensure the right level of quality to the product before it is delivered to the Zanardi Foundry customers. For this purpose, there are areas dedicated exclusively to the testing of cast iron castings, both raw and machined. With the laser scanning method, it is possible to obtain a scatter diagram that reproduces the real workpiece and the relative dimensions. Once the scatter diagram has been obtained, this is superimposed over the three-dimensional file agreed to by the customer. During the design phase, any differences in dimensions will then be highlighted on a screen through a color scale. On the other hand, the three-dimensional coordinate measuring machine verifies that the linear dimensions and any geometrical tolerances indicated in the drawing of the raw or machine component are complied with. The measurement detected by the instrument is compared with the dimension desired and indicated on a report. The X-ray technique is used to check for the presence of any internal defects. The rays of an X-ray emitter passes through a section of the component and impress a photographic plate. Once developed, the plate can be evaluated by a certified operator who classifies the degree of defects identified according to the international standards. These defects can be generated by the solidification process of the cast part, which could, in some cases, leave air bubbles trapped inside the cast part itself. 
These defects or discontinuities are generally unwanted because they could compromise the structural strength of the component. In addition to the x-rays, the internal quality of the workpiece can be checked through ultrasonic testing. By placing the appropriate probe on the cast part surface, it is possible to, without having to separate it, understand whether the workpiece is healthy or if it has internal defects. If internal defects are present, the ultrasound emitter gives back a different frequency response compared to a defect-free material, highlighting the presence discontinuity. For the more critical parts in terms of safety, the surfaces are visually inspected to identify surface defects that are not acceptable to the designer, based on international standards and supply specifications. Highly specialized and experienced personnel are required for this activity to assess the state of the components in order to identify even more critical defects such as surface cracks. A magnetoscope inspection can be carried out. This instrument makes it possible to check the surface of a part and highlight whether there are surface cracks that could compromise its duration and use. After having magnetized the workpiece, it is covered with a water-based liquid with magnetic particles. Within a sufficiently darkened environment, using a UV lamp, it will be possible to highlight any cracks, thanks to the accumulation of the magnetic particles near the crack itself. We have come to the end of our journey through the Zanardi Foundry Company. We have followed the whole process in some parts very innovative of making a ductile iron object.